Let's start in your hometown of uh, Philadelphia. And did you did you see the Carlson esque tweet that was sent out by the Flyers? That's what we're here for, guys, to win. Oh my God, the uh, the, the tweet from the Flyers today about the new era of orange. I was dying. That's got to be one of the greatest, funniest tweets I've seen in quite some time. It's not quite as funny as a team that spent a few hundred thousand dollars hiring two search firms to tell them to hire their own broadcaster. I mean, <laughs> that is that is next level efficiency right there. Um, I mean, look, Keith Jones has he's been the Flyers color guy for basically as long as I can remember. 15 years, seven, 17 years. It's been a long, long time. He's been on morning radio in Philadelphia f- for 20 some years. As a radio guy, super smart. It's clearly it. Yeah, that's it. Um, I I love Keith Jones. Like he's an amazing guy. Uh, he's one of the funniest bastards you'll ever meet. I'm just. I I think this. I, I think if this role is to be a public facing conduit from uh, front office to fans and to essentially speak directly to them to help this team become relevant again. Like the marketing aspect of this is so critical because for the first time in my entire life, I've lived in Philly from, you know, since I was born, I've never seen the flyers not be relevant. And that's what they've become irrelevant. So that's the biggest thing is, is you got to get everyone on board and Keith Jones can help do that. And I, I'd suspect without having heard anyone speak yet, their press conferences are scheduled for Friday, that that's exactly the plan, is Danny Briere will run hockey ops. Keith Jones, of course, having watched and kept a close eye on the game as a broadcaster for the, these last number of years will be a guiding voice and a guiding light. But Danny Briere is going to be the one, I would think, making the final say and pulling the trigger on decisions And make no mistake, John Tortorella is going to have an enormous seat at the table. He is, I'd say, maybe outside of Mike Sullivan in Pittsburgh, he is the most powerful coach in the league right now. More than Cooper in Tampa Bay? Uh, I I would think so. I I don't think Cooper has even one shred of really any say in Julian Breezeball's world. Okay. I'm not saying they don't get along or he's not consulted, but he's not making any calls. On that. So you think Tortorella is going to be making like, oh, we want to sign this free agent? Uh, yeah, hundred percent. Like, watch the last handful of games of the season. He was upstairs in the press box, not on the bench, advising Danny Briere on what was happening in real time. Uh, I don't know why you would need to do that. By the way, it makes no sense. Like, what is he possibly telling him in the moment that he couldn't tell him on video? But nonetheless, it signals to me uh, the influence that John Tortorella has. And he's referenced multiple times in their press release. And you could even read the words in their, you know, new slogan, the new era of orange that you were just talking about. (laughs) It's almost like you can hear the words coming from his mouth. You got to work your ass off. They actually said that ass in their statement. They did. So doesn't that sound like something Torts would say? Yeah. So... Like Danny Briere was a finalist for the Montreal uh, job. Like he's, you know, he's well respected as, you know, smart guy being around the league for quite some time. What do you make about now? He's been the interim guy for a while. Like this isn't very shocking. I wouldn't think. Is it shocking to you? You're closer to it than I am. Not shocking to me. This was a fait accompli. Uh, They, they never interviewed anyone for the position. Like he was essentially anointed interim GM and then just ripped the, the name tag off and is now permanent. Um, what I love about Danny Briere is he works. He was just at the under 18 worlds in Switzerland. He's in rinks all the time. He's constantly watching talent. Uh, he's got a great eye for it. He's sort of been, he's always been one of the smartest guys in, in the room in whatever room he's been in. And he's not one of those people that's going to tell you that, which I love even more. But having spent a lot of time around him when he was a player and covering him, uh, he certainly has 
a ton of intelligence and and that eye for talent that I think is so critical. You have to be the GM in any organization needs to be the best talent evaluator. And that's that suits him really well. So I, I think that's going to take him a long way. And I think he also really understands and just having him on our frankly speaking pod a few weeks back, he understands this is going to be a long process that they're not trying as much as they said, our goal is to win in that statement. They're not trying to do this overnight. Like they know this is going to be a, he hasn't put a timeline on it, but this is going to be a five year exercise to get there. And are they expecting Sean Kachiri to play next year? I believe they are. Okay. And they're also um, Ryan, expecting Cam Atkinson to play. Next. Cam Atkinson to play. Uh, obviously, uh, Ryan Ellis doesn't look like it. Doesn't sound like no, he's. Ryan playing. Ellis is done. Yeah. Um, James Van Riemsdyk. They um, gonna, is he going to walk? Yep. Okay. So. Yeah, I'm going to be got curious. Decisions to make, like. Oh yeah. Overov, D'Angelo. I'd imagine that Kevin Hayes is gone. Um, they're going to find someone to take him. I think with. Tony D'Angelo, they're going to try and repair that relationship with John Tortorella. I, I don't know how successful that's going to be. Um, and then I'm, I think the big question is, does Danny Briere want to trade Ivan Provorov? Is he willing to? Because I think there's risk. And maybe that's not the first move you want to make as GM. Because I think he's a good player and could look really good somewhere else. Yeah, so... It'll be fascinating to see what the what goes on in Flyer in the in the new orange, Frank. The uh, the new era of orange. Now, because by the way, was a, a hint and a nod to the fact that they're bringing back their yes. burnt orange jerseys. Well, I was going to say uh, I, at the end of it, I was like, well, didn't they announce they're bringing back the jerseys? They just could have had this one out with that one. But I don't know if you remember that scene from Slapshot, though. That's all I heard about today. The, the speech in the room, oh, with the Hanson brothers. God, it makes me laugh every time. That's what we're here for, guys. To win. Yeah. Oh, so good. You said, yeah, oh, you meant the 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 C-A-R-L-S-O-N, the Carlson brothers. I thought yes. you, when you said it, I was like, Eric Carlson. Like, what, when did he no. say this? No, no, not not the uh, not the Ted Lindsay finalist, but um, the uh, the Carlson brothers, man, from Slapshot. One of the, still one of my favorite uh, greatest hockey movies of all time. 